So you may or may not know that I have a text community and really that's an opportunity for people to text in. They can ask questions of me. I can share wisdom and knowledge from time to time. It's also a way that we do giveaways and I try to communicate at mass with people. And from time to time, I get questions. Sometimes I provoke them, other times people are just asking. And so I wanted to address some of those questions that I've been getting lately because I think it's helpful to hear what other people are thinking and therefore uh, my answers to what other people are thinking. So here goes a couple of questions that I wanna answer for you to be a little bit more helpful with what goes on in my head in ways that I can help coach you to live the best version of the life that you've been given. So somebody asked me, how do you visually and internally interpret the word, fa word failure, <laughs> the world of failure? I don't love that people try to spin failure into something that it's not. If you failed, you failed. Whether I win or lose does not determine my value and worth as a human being. We're so afraid to admit failure, then we, we, we have distorted this idea of what, it, what, what failure does to us. I see failure as a reality in this world and a necessary reality. And so I'm gonna challenge you to say that because you failed, it doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you uh, unsuccessful. It's an opportunity, opportunity for you to learn and to grow. Do you need to get better? Do you need to educate more? Do you need to push harder? Do you need to commit more? Or do you need to change direction and go do something else? Stop running away from scary words. Lean into them and allow them to push you to be the best version of yourself. If being super positive all the time, I love super positive, all the time is lacking reality. And my answer is yes and no. The reality is there's gonna be times that we can't be positive. We're hurt, we're angry. But I would challenge you to be more positive. I believe that it will create a more positive environment around you. And one quick example of this, if you saw back a couple of months, I was at a concert, I was having a little bit of fun and I started to high five a few people that were around me. And what I noticed was, is people were kind of looking at me like, like they wanted one too. And so I decided that I was gonna high five everybody against my wife's best wishes. It caused other people to wanna get involved and people were walking by looking at me wanting to high five me too. What I recognize is, is the more positive that I am, the more it's gonna lift other people up. And if other people are that way, the more I'm gonna be lifted up too. Why do you think people are bad at handling confrontations. The first one is, is because you are afraid of what other people are gonna think. Second thing is because people have not prepared to handle an opinion that is counter to their opinion. Turn on the news today and you will see that on display all the time. Stephen Covey reference coming in right now. Seek first to understand and then be understood. That is how you will better deal with difficult conversations. Sit down and seek to understand why they are in the position they're in and then make a decision to do what's right based upon all of the facts that you have to produce the best outcome for you and for everybody that's around you. Damn, is this a good one. How do you handle professional requests that violate your conscience. And I'm gonna tell you what I did. I went into business for myself. But it's not always that easy, right? Because I could be tempted to violate my conscience for a really good contract, or maybe you work for an employer uh, that, uh, that's gonna ask you to do something that you're not comfortable with doing. Does that mean somebody asked you to compromise and you're like, whoop, can't, and that's why you went out on your own? Yeah. Well, I started working for a family-owned business, and then the corporation came in and it was all about shareholders to the expense of our clients. Raise prices, they can't afford it. It doesn't matter, do it anyway. Uh, add this line item, they can, that's not the right thing to do. It doesn't matter, we're gonna do it anyway. It wasn't like unethical as much as it was just like not comfortable. So that was, that was stuff that was really big. And then like, if now today, like if I worked for the employee benefits, like in that world that I did, I don't think I could work there anymore. Not because they were unethical, but just because like they benefit off of their customers paying more money. And it's just shady. How do you balance goals, work, church, family, social life, and stay on track with it all and without getting upset? Balance doesn't exist 
in the way that we think a scale would measure out balance. It, we're always gonna sacrifice one thing uh, to, uh, to invest in another. The way you're ultimately gonna do that is by laying a really good foundation for your life. I talk about this at my Foundations to Freedom Academy. This is why I am constantly encouraging people to, to get involved, to participate, to join an upcoming group. This is the key to it all. We have to lay a foundation. Who are you? What do you value most in life? What are you most passionate about? And what are the principles or guardrails that you have set in place to ensure you never get outside of them? Because ultimately, if I do that, I will never get outside this idea of balance. It may be 70% to this and 30% to this, but I will never feel imbalanced because I have laid a good foundation. Then I can create the right habits and disciplines. Then I can have the right accountability structure in place. Then I can be pursuing the right goals. That is the way that I do that without getting angry or getting frustrated. I'm still gonna get frustrated at times for different reasons. But ultimately, if I've laid a foundation and I have, a, I have clarity of direction into the future, I ensure the best possible chance for success. Success meaning the achievement of the goal that I'm after or the end that I'm after. I encourage you, if this is a question that you're struggling with, how do I balance these things? How do I prioritize these things? How do I, how do I get the most out of every single area? How do I get the most out of my job? How do I get the most out of my uh, family? How do I get the most out of my experiences at church? How do I get the most out of my friendships? I encourage you and invite you into the Academy. We're launching another group soon. This is a great way to do that. I am literally pitching you on this because not only do I believe in it myself, but I've gotten feedback to say that this was the key to setting people off on the right direction, freeing them up to finally see life the way that it was ultimately designed for them. So do that.